The coaching never stops. The key is to work with a good one. You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOpreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. Your number one marketing tool is your voiceover demos. When you're posting them online, you want to be sure they're playable on any device and with any browser. The Voice Sam Player does exactly that. Sign up at msvo.me slash msvoicesam and receive three months of Voice Sam for the price of one. Sign up now at msvo.me slash msvoicesam. The VOpreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Everyday VOpreneur podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. Thank you so much for listening. Wherever fine podcasts are given away for free, make sure that you subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can listen on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean. And of course, you can listen to any episode anytime by jumping onto the website at veopreneur.com. I'm Mark Scott. Thank you so much for listening. So this week, we are going to talk about coaching experiences because the fact of the matter is, coaching never ends. But in today's voiceover marketplace, sometimes it's really hard for coaching to even begin because people don't know who they can trust. There are so many people that are out there that are just looking to take advantage of you. People who are looking to cash the check and really give you nothing of value. People who don't care whether or not you actually have the ability to do voiceover, they just want your money. And they're never going to give you honest feedback or helpful feedback or constructive feedback. Maybe they're just looking to sell you a demo. And so because of this marketplace that we live in now, people are scared to do coaching. I get emails from voice actors every single day wanting to know who they can trust. And that is one of the reasons why I put together this episode, because I want to highlight some of the coaches that I personally trust and have worked with, but I also want to share some stories from voice actors who have worked with really great coaches and had really great experiences. I don't want you to be afraid of coaching, because it's the only way that your business is going to grow. In fact, as I'm recording this episode right now, I'm working with two different coaches on two different areas of voiceover that I'm looking to get better at, the coaching never ends. With the internet and social media, what has happened is anybody can create a platform for themselves now. All they have to do is post a few videos on LinkedIn or post a few videos on Instagram or Twitter or set up their own YouTube channel. And once they get a few videos under their belt, they're immediately seen as an expert. So-and-so must know everything that there is to know about voiceover because they have a YouTube channel. So-and-so must know everything about voiceover because they have a really big following on Instagram. So-and-so must be a person that I can trust to teach me all about business and marketing and performance and voiceover because they have videos that they share on LinkedIn and, and some people that I know have joined their LinkedIn network. And so because of that, it is really difficult to discern nowadays who's legit and who's not. I'm not going to sit here and tell you in this podcast who's not legit, although trust me, I would really like to. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to tell you the names of some people that you can trust. And the first person we're going to talk about is someone that I have personally had amazing experiences with. I met Everett Oliver for the first time, I believe it was at the WovoCon in Las Vegas, and we sat down and we had lunch together. I didn't know Everett. He was just looking for a place to sit down and eat, and he sat down beside me, and he's completely nuts, and he'll talk to anybody, and he's got an amazing sense of humor, and he's probably one of the most personable people that you will ever meet, and I instantly felt a connection with Everett, and we have been friends ever since. I have coached with him. Uh, we have hung out at conferences together. He came to Toronto a couple of years ago to do a, a weekend workshop. I took him to a Blue Jays game, gave him his first poutine experience. When I went to L.A. back in February to record a new demo, I made a point of hooking up with Everett. And my wife and Everett and I all went out for a great big seafood feast. And I always look forward to opportunities to spend time with Everett because he's an amazing person. But he's also an amazing coach. And Paul Delaros can speak very directly and very personally to how amazing it is to coach with Everett Oliver. 
I don't even think you're going to believe Paul's story, even after hearing it. This is a good one. We all know that we need to be coached and we need to learn. So I decided I wanted to be coached more on animation and characters, video games. So I asked Mark on his Facebook page, who's the best person to speak to? And he said, Everett Oliver at my booth director. Um, okay. So I looked him up and credentials are massive. King of the Hill, The Simpsons. I mean, the list is endless. And thought, okay, I'll give him a shout. But because I like being in front of people, I thought, why not go to Los Angeles? Why not fly over for a coaching session? Instead of doing Skype sessions, because you've got to try and get your timings right. Are they busy? Are you busy? What have got on next? You know, it's the, it's the morning for me. It's late night for him. So we we spoke and he kept saying to me, are you sure you want to come over all the way over? And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course I do. But I've got to be back Friday and Saturday because I'm on stage. So I only had three days to do a 37-hour round trip. Um, when Just before I was going, Everett said to me, um, have you heard of Dave Fennoy? I was like, who hasn't? If you're in the voiceover business and you don't know who he is, then you shouldn't be in the voiceover business. He said, um, no one in LA has got their own studios. So I've booked Dave's house his studio in his house to do to do a coaching session with with Everett and then two days later do a coaching session with Dave. Is that all right? I was like, is that all right? It was incredible. Dave was there both the times. He asked me to go early. Um, I saw him do an advert uh, and learnt, and just learnt so much off him. And Everett is incredible because he's not a voice actor himself. He is just a, a director. He's he, he's got nothing. He, he just gives. He just gives everything, and brings out the best in you, like you wouldn't believe. Some of the techniques that he comes out with are so simple, but so amazing. I've used stuff that him himself and Dave has taught me every single day, doing auditions and doing uh, different jobs. My experience with them over the last sort of sort of twelve months. I mean. If anybody's listened to this in the UK, I'm actually bringing Everett Oliver from my booth director over to the UK for March next year. So we're going to be running classes and you can email me or just get hold of me on Facebook or whatever and uh, I'll let you know all about them. But I'm also, what I've asked Everett to do is just to do some talks, you know, some some talks for different uh, VO groups about what life's like in Los Angeles and Hollywood because it is so different. We were having, myself and Everett were having something to eat at a restaurant, and he said, oh, I've got to pop to Disney Studios because I'm, because I'm doing a casting tomorrow. And, I mean, it was like, what? That, that doesn't happen over here. It's, you know, in England, that doesn't happen. But in Hollywood, it was just, it was just the norm that he just got phoned up by somebody at Disney to pop in and see him. Um, it, incredible experience. The most expensive coaching I have ever had to pay for um, when you look at all the flights and hotels and everything else. And I would pay it again and again and again. And I would do it all the time because what I learned has, has changed the way I work. Uh, they are fantastic. And uh, I loved every second of it. I like an adventure though. Every Oliver is one of my favorite people in the whole world. He's funny. He's talented. Uh, and just it looked after me so much and made me feel so welcome. And we speak regularly now, and uh, and I I do class him as a as a true friend. I absolutely love him. He's phenomenal. If you want to learn how good you can be, speak to Everett. And thanks, Mark, because it was your fault. You, you cost me all that money, and it was your fault that you put me in touch with Everett. And now I've got a lifelong friend. Paul flew from the UK to L.A. to work with Everett Oliver. He flew halfway across the world to work with Everett Oliver in person, and it was an experience that changed his life. And I understand it. You know, there's something to what Paul has to say about, you know, I, I know I could do it over Skype or I could do it over Zoom, but I wanted to be there with him in person. 
And that's exactly how I felt when I decided that I was going to do my first commercial demo, and I chose to do that with Uncle Roy. That is why I flew to New Jersey, and I went and recorded it at his house so that I could work with him in person, so that he could be there directing me, so we could be face-to-face, so that we could go out for bagels, and he could take me to Wohop. And and that was kind of the, the birth of the killer demo adventure, which is part of Uncle Roy's marketing now. Sign up, do a demo with Uncle Roy, and rather than just doing a directed session over the internet, you have an opportunity to come to New Jersey, record at his home, spend some time with him in Jersey eating bagels, spend some time with him in Manhattan eating Chinese food at Wohop, and it's this incredible experience. Not only the adventure of it all, but there's something to be said about being in the room with a coach. There's something to be said about being directed face-to-face when you're working on that demo. So when Paul told me that he was going to travel to L.A. to work with Everett, I, I understood. As crazy as it sounded, I understood. Because I did the same thing when I went to do my demo with Anganguza. I wanted to go to L.A. I wanted to work with her in person. I wanted to have that experience. So, Paul, I totally get it. And as crazy as it sounds, I know that you are reaping the rewards from that. And other people, I think, would too if they made that kind of investment. So that's a really great story. Thank you so much for sharing it, Paul. And of course, I fully endorse working with Everett Oliver. And you can find out more about Everett by jumping onto his website at myboothdirector.com. If you're looking to do commercial, if you're looking to do video game, if you're looking to do animation. And the other thing about Everett is that he's not just a great performance coach, but there's a little bit of therapy that goes on when you're working with Everett as well, because he knows that sometimes we get in our own way because we won't get out of our own heads. And Everett's really good at cutting through that. And I really appreciated the way that he was with me and still enjoy working with him so much. Very gifted coach. Now, the next one that we're going to talk about is also an experience that I can speak to very directly and an experience that I wholeheartedly endorse after having the opportunity to have experienced it just in August, going to Ireland for the JMC Euro Retreat. Listen to this story from Lynn Norris. So the question was, what coaching experience had the biggest career impact? And um, that's kind of a hard question to answer. I've had some fantastic coaching experiences and uh, attended some amazing conferences and workshops and um But when I think about it, I'm going to say that attending the first Euro VO retreat in Barcelona with J. Michael Collins made the biggest career impact. I was the least experienced person there. I had just started my business in January of that year. So I went knowing that there was a lot to learn and that I would need to bring my A game because I was going to hang with other presenters and participants who were rocking major careers in voiceover. So we got to work with J. Michael Collins, Hugh Edwards, Joe Cipriano, and A.J. McKay. And this wasn't just a one-hour workshop, thank you, go home. This was a week of intensive class time, uh, three hours at a clip in a certain genre, uh, commercial or gaming or promo or TV narration or imaging. And so we really got to work intensely, sometimes in groups as small as three or four. And so for three hours, three of us learning, we really got to get through a lot of copy and work on our skills. And it was an educational experience that you don't often get uh, just from attending a class for an hour or even for one day. This was a week of this kind of experience. And then I also got a chance to meet the other participants and bond with these talented voice actors, and it gave me a group of truly good humans that we still are friends and support each other and help each other with our businesses, and that's been a complete gift. Uh, the VO community is wonderful, of course, and but having some people who had this intense experience with me, uh, your kind of comrade in arms in a way, in a very good way. And then it changed my mindset about myself because I uh, learned a lot and could really see myself growing and, and um, getting better at my skills. And then uh, also the, the experience of the week of being at this resort and J. Michael Collins, uh, his wife, Anna, was really instrumental in making sure that our experience at the resort was 
beyond all expectation. This was a beautiful villa. We were completely taken care of. Um, We never had to really ask for anything. Um, And it was aspirational. And I really got to see what success in voiceover could look like. And let me tell you, it was that mindset shift that really made the biggest impact for me. Let me be perfectly honest with you. Because that's what I do. When I heard about these JMC Euro retreats for the first time, I, I kind of got it. But at the same time, I just kept thinking that is a crap ton of money to spend. And I just wonder if there are better ways that that money could be spent. And that is not anything against J. Michael Collins. That's just me as a business owner looking at my finances and thinking, how do I get the most bang for my buck? But then J. Michael invited me to come to a Euro retreat. And having been there and having experienced it, it was the most amazing thing. And it totally made sense to me. It totally made sense to me. What I witnessed in a week, because I I went and sat in on all the sessions. I I sat at the back of the room just kind of as a fly on the wall. I wanted to watch what was going on. I, I wanted to experience it too. And what I watched happen in a week with this group of voice actors who, you know, some of them were pretty raw when they first started out. But but just a few short days of, of these intensive sessions with A-level coaches, I was just blown away. I really was. It, was. it was something to behold. And something else that Lynn said really stuck out to me, getting to see what success in voiceover could really look like. And going through that mindset shift, that made complete sense to me as well. Now, maybe everybody isn't five-star luxury resort in Ireland, which is what I had the opportunity to experience, and fine dining and chauffeurs and all of that sort of stuff. Maybe that's not exactly what your thing is, but maybe there's something else. But even for me, someone who is so completely aware of mindset and goals and and how important the narratives are that we feed ourselves. Even for somebody like me to sit there and experience it, I came home fully believing, fully knowing that there was so much more that was available to me. That there was so much more that was possible if I was just willing to work a little harder, work a little smarter, maybe stretch myself out of my comfort zone. I could do some more things too. I could definitely increase my income. I could definitely increase the quality of my life and and the experiences that I have with my, my family, with going on these trips with my wife and whatever. I just can't say enough about what goes on at these Yara retreats. And I am so honored that I had the opportunity to experience it for myself. And I'm so amazed at what happened. And even though I was there as a presenter... And, uh, you know, like I said, I I wasn't participating in the sessions. I was just sitting in the back watching just because, hey, I had an opportunity to sit back and watch. And, you know, I didn't know who Dave Walsh was until that that weekend or that week. We had never met before. And I sat in on his session. And within the first 20 minutes of his session, I was so blown away by Dave that I not only threw up an endorsement for him on Facebook, but I also booked three sessions for myself. And I'm, I'm I'm one session in. And I can already see how good he's going to be for me. That was because of what happened at the Euro retreat. And AJ McKay and I have been friends for for several years now. We met, I think, maybe the first time at the Mid-Atlantic. Actually, no, it was the Midwest Voiceover Conference in Columbus, Ohio, a few years ago. And we've been friends ever since then. And and having the opportunity to spend some more time with AJ and, and again, seeing some of the stuff that that went on in that retreat. I'm now working with AJ as well, doing a little bit of coaching with him. We're actually doing a little bit of back and forth. I'm I'm working with him on some marketing stuff. He's working with me on some imaging stuff. And I came home from that retreat and I also reached out to J. Michael Collins and I said, you know what? We've never done a demo together and that's just crazy. Why have I not done a demo with you? He's an amazing demo producer. Every time the guy, it feels like every time he produces a demo almost, it gets nominated for a Voice Arts Award. And, uh, and so I'm going to work with J. Michael on a demo now as well. All of those things would not have happened if I hadn't been at the Your Retreat. And again, when as a presenter. 
So if that's what happened as a presenter, just imagine how much more you're going to get out of it as an attendee. So I totally get what Lynn was talking about and totally respect what she had to say because I understand it. Now, we started off this episode by talking about how sometimes it can be really difficult to determine who's a good coach, who can I trust. And that is part of the reason for this episode, because I wanted to be able to throw out names of, of people that I trust, because I get asked about it a lot. But sometimes the person that you really have to trust is your own gut. Amanda Sellers has a story that I think will resonate with a lot of people, and it resonated with me on a personal level. And that's one of the reasons why I really wanted her to share the story for this episode. So listen to what Amanda Sellers has to say about an experience she had with coaching. I started my journey in theater school, then I was a musician, I toured around in my band all over the U.S., and I became a radio DJ, and it was through radio that I fell in love with voiceover. So my first step was to make my own demo from the commercials I did as a radio DJ. I bought a Rode NT1A mic, a Steinberg interface that went into our MacBook, and we used GarageBand. Our mic was in the closet of our 700-square-foot basement suite. As I started to audition online and pitch different agents with my demo that I personally made, I found myself starting to book a lot of work. I worked hard, but I was also booking a lot of work. It was extremely exciting. I cut down my hours as a bartender, and I focused on being more available to the auditions that were coming in and looking for opportunities. Then I started to look for coaches because I felt it could really help me get to the next level. I felt that I found one that would do it. It was $450 for four lessons. At the time, my rent was $700, so that was a lot of money to me. But I really wanted to make the investment in myself and my new career, so I went for it. I had never told this coach that I was basically doing full-time voiceovers at this point. Maybe it was just me being humble or not thinking it was necessary to say but I didn't say anything about the amount of work that was coming in for me personally. The lessons I learned from this coach on performance, I'm sure were valuable in some way. Looking back, I can't really remember at the time, but the most impactful part was when this coach told me that, Amanda, you have potential. You absolutely have potential, but you are not demo ready yet. And then she went on to tell me that I would need to keep up with the lessons and perhaps over time, I would become demo ready which at that point I could pursue an actual voiceover career. I was appalled. It was a defining moment for me because I was already booking work. I was already basically a full-time voice actor. So that inspired me to stay in my lane and make this happen for myself on my own terms. I absolutely continued to seek coaching through other VO coaches that have been amazing. And as a VO talent, we know it's imperative to handle criticism and feedback in this business. But I think it's ultimately what you do with that information that can drive you to succeed. Listen to what resonates with you and ignore anything that intuitively doesn't feel right. Imagine if I would have listened to that coach. Imagine if I would have thought, wow, I I'm not very good. I, I shouldn't have a demo. I Maybe it's just luck that I'm booking this work. No, I stayed on my path. Now, over 10 years, I've been a full-time voice actor, absolutely loving this business, and now positively helping new VO talent start their careers at the voiceover school. So my big takeaway here is to stay on your own path and just dig in. You can do it. That sounds like one of those moments where a coach is just trying to make money off of you, right? I mean, Amanda's already very successful in her business at that point. She's got her demo. She's working. She's booking consistently. And there's a coach that's trying to hold her back. And Amanda had to listen to that voice inside of herself and say, no, no, something's not right here. And she pressed on and she has continued to grow her career. And now she's in a position where she's able to coach others as well, which is fantastic. But what she had to say was so important because I am sure that there have been times when coaches have told you something that just didn't sit right. That maybe just didn't feel like it was right. Maybe they were trying to sell you something. Maybe they were trying to sell you more coaching. Maybe they were trying to sell you a new demo. You know, I've, I've told a story, and I don't say who it is, but I went to the uh, Voice Arts Awards in 2016. I was nominated for a commercial demo, and I got into speed dating with your demo. 
And I was really excited to be able to have that opportunity to share that demo. It was the commercial demo that I produced with Uncle Roy. And I was really excited to be able to have the opportunity to share that demo with agents and producers and, you know, all the big deal people that participate in speed dating with your demo. And one of the particular producers, who's a Hollywood producer, listened to, listened to my demo and told me that it was awful. Um, asked me if I had ever worked in voiceover before. And I said, yeah, yeah, I've, I've been working in it full time for a while. And he's like, oh, really? He's like, but but are you actually making money? And I said, well, yeah, I've, I've been making some money. And uh, he said, well, but OK, but like realistically, how much money are you going to make this year? I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm on pace to make six figures in my voiceover business this year. And that kind of caught him off guard. He, he couldn't figure that one out, but continued to tell me how bad the demo was and slipped me his card and said that he'd be very happy to work with me and, and get a new demo put together for me. And uh, I thanked him for his time and thanked him for his feedback. And when the bell rang and it was time for me to move on to the next person, he said, by the way, what are, what are you here for? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm nominated for a voice arts award. And he's like, oh, yeah, for what? And I said, well, for that crap demo that you just picked apart. And then I just left. That's where the conversation ended. It's hard to know who you can trust. And the other thing is that sometimes it's very subjective, right? One person will hear your demo and say it's great. Another person will hear your demo and say it's bad. One person will hear a read and say it's amazing. One person will hear a read and say it's bad. Ask 10 people what conversational means and you'll get 10 different answers. And so there's certainly a part of that that is built into it. But you also have to keep your radar on. And you have to trust your gut because most of the time it's going to guide you in the right direction. And if you're really not sure about someone, take the time to get some references. Ask around about them. Find out whether or not they are the real deal. I am very happy to talk about the coaches that I trust, to talk about the coaches that I fully endorse because I know that they are the real deal. I have personally worked with Everett Oliver and seen results from that. I've personally worked with Uncle Roy, both in coaching, demo production, and he is the man that is fully responsible for my studio and my sound. He is my tech guru. And we got nominated for a Voice Arts Award together. And I know that he's the real deal. And I know that you can trust him. I have nothing but good things to say about working with Ann Ganguza. Doing my e-learning demo with her earlier this year was incredible. We did a bunch of coaching sessions together ahead of time. And then I had the opportunity to fly to L.A. We went into a studio in Santa Monica. We did the demo together. And I'm so proud of that demo. And that demo is making me money now. And I absolutely have no issue referring people to Angangusa because I know that she's the real deal. You can trust J. Michael Collins completely. He's the real deal. A.J. McKay, same deal. You can trust A.J. if you want to do some coaching or if you're working on demo production. J. Michael and A.J. are an incredible team. They do incredible things. Having now had the opportunity to work with Dave Walsh personally, I'm excited to keep working with him because I know that he's the real deal. And I know that he is he's taken me to therapy camp. Let's be honest, Dave. And for those of you that have worked with Dave, you know exactly what I'm talking about right now. Dave is 100 percent taking me to therapy camp, but I need it. I need it. I'm really good at, at helping other people, but sometimes I'm not so good at helping myself because I'm too close to it. And you guys, you know, you understand what that's like. Sometimes we need that outside perspective to call us out on our BS. And, and Dave has definitely been that guy that, is, that has called me out on my BS. Actually, you know, I recently had Uncle Roy up to my house for the, he came for a night before the VO North conference in, in Toronto and had a big crawfish boil and spent some time together. And he came down into my studio and was doing some work in my studio, making some changes in Adobe Audition for me. And I, I had an audition script come in. So I came into the booth and how often do you get the opportunity to have Uncle Roy direct you live from your own studio? And so I, I had that opportunity. And, and Uncle Roy called me out on some stuff that I was doing in my read. And, and I got a better read on that audition because he was here. So finding those good coaches that you know that you can trust, finding those good coaches that are going to pull the best out of you, that are going to push you, that are going to challenge you, that are going to stretch you, it really makes a big difference. And speaking of being pulled and stretched and moving out of your comfort zone, 
Well, Scott Parkin has the ability to do that. Listen to what Drew Campbell has to say. The first time I heard of Scott Parkin was last year uh, through the voiceover network. Scott came to the UK last year to run an improv workshop. It was for the voiceover network event Above and Beyond, just outside London last year in September. First impressions were, funny guy, funny guy. Um, he, he loved the Game of Thrones, kept going on about the Game of Thrones. Uh, Peaky Blinders, big fan. And uh, he kept coming out with his Cockney accents. And uh, that was funny, that was funny. And he loved Monty Python, so this guy, we gelled straight away. Um, he also brought his daughter, Miranda, uh, a very, very talented artist and a voice artist as well. And uh, she was funny, uh, just like father, like daughter. Now, the workshop itself, uh, I didn't know what to expect. I'd never done improv before in my life. Um, I knew it was a great asset for voice artists. I just had to do it. I threw myself in there. And the um, first thing we did was, uh, in a group sort of situation, was uh, Timmy Fell Down the Well, where one person had to shout out, Timmy Fell Down the Well, help. And uh, the next person had to improv on that. Uh, so this went on, this went on, and uh, <laughs> it was... Uh, but by the end of it, we were all in stitches. Um, so funny. That sort of uh, broke the ice. It made everyone more relaxed. And then the next part was... Um, well, we had to pair up, sometimes in threes, uh, and do a sketch. So we had to, like, uh, quick fire off each other sort of thing. Just straightforward lines, but improv in between them. And uh, that that was a blast as well. Um, then again, I've never done that before. So the last part of the workshop was where we had to sort of memorise a couple of lines. My line was, all this flavour trapped into this tiny mint. There's nothing like a tic-tac. And after saying that line just once, he fired different directions at us. And uh, I must have done about 10, 15. And when you're in a directed session... Improv is a fantastic tool to have in your voiceover toolbox. So if you ever want to do an improv workshop, I highly recommend Scott Parkin. Extremely funny guy, heart of gold, he'll bring the best out of you, and you'll have some great belly laughs, I'm telling you. Improv scares the crap out of me. Not gonna lie. It scares the crap out of me. It is probably the last thing that I would ever think to go and do because it scares the crap out of me so much. And, and... Keeping in mind that I'm not a creative guy first. I'm a, I'm a business guy who's learned how to do voiceover. I'm not a not a creative that's learned how to be an entrepreneur. And the, man, that is so far out of my comfort zone. But I can see value. I can see value. And every time that somebody that I know coaches with Scott Parkin, they tell me what an absolutely amazing experience that it was. And I get it. I, I see it. I understand it. And I think Drew speaks to that very, very well. You know, if you want to move forward in your career, there are a few things that you have to recognize. First and foremost, you're only going to be as good as the coaches that you work with. And you have to stop seeing coaching as an expense. You have to see coaching as an investment. You're looking at 150 or $200 an hour and, and thinking, you know, I can't, I can't afford $150. I, I can't afford $200 to, to work with a coach for an hour. But what if that $200 session resulted in your next $2,000 booking? Then could you afford it? So that's where you have to stop looking strictly at the expense. A $200 line item on your spreadsheet. And you have to start thinking about what is the return potential of that $200. Could I spend $200 working with Everett, working with Dave, working with Roy, working with Ann? And could that result in an extra $20,000 in income for you this year? I think it could. I, I really think it could. I can look back in my own business and I can see the growth curve that takes place after every coaching that I do. And I don't generally do just one session. You know, I, I did, I probably did 10 sessions with Uncle Roy before I did my commercial demo. And I probably did 10 or 12 sessions with Ann before I did my e-learning demo. And I was already consistently booking e-learning work at the time. 
You know, I've probably done at least half a dozen sessions with Everett and countless audition sessions as well. Like when a big audition comes in from an agent that I'd really like to try to nail, I'll call up Everett and I'll book him for an audition session because that's something that he offers and and he'll direct me through that audition. And I always get better reads because I'm always learning from him. And, you know, when I when I watch Dave Walsh do his work in Ireland, I didn't just go online and, and I talk to him about sessions. Like, I went and booked three right out of the gate. And I'll probably end up booking another three or six, ultimately, because he's that good. And, and I believe that he can make that much of a difference for me and, and my business. So you have to look at the return potential. Don't just look at the, the price tag. How much is this going to make me back in the long run? I'm not suggesting that anybody should be going bankrupt. I'm not telling you that you need to skip your electric bill to pay for coaching. But what I am saying is when we want something bad enough, we find a way. I wanted to coach with Dave bad enough that I found a way. And keep in mind that I'm Canadian. So the money that I'm spending on Dave Walsh, I'm, I think Dave's are 175 bucks an hour U.S., and I still got to convert that over. So that works out to like, I don't know, 225, 230 bucks Canadian that I got to pay. Worth every dime for me. Worth every dime for me because I know that I only need one job to make it back. And then every job after that becomes pure profit. So look at the investment. But also remember that the coaching never stops. Oftentimes we will do coaching leading up to a demo. And then once the demo has been recorded, we'll think, okay, well, I'm ready to go now. And, and you are. If your coach is done right by you, you are. But trends change. Reads that worked five years ago don't work anymore. I'm living proof of that. My bread and butter reads that booked me like crazy five years ago, those types of reads aren't booking anymore, which is why I'm always working with coaches so I can stay on top of trends, so I can develop new reads, so I can get better at delivering what the buyer wants today, not just what the buyer wanted two or three years ago. So I hope that this episode becomes encouraging for you to know that the coaching never stops, to know that the coaching is always worth it, and to know that there are great coaches that are out there that are invested in your success. You know, I have said, when I go through Playbook, I say, that I'm not interested in selling courses. I'm interested in growing businesses. I take it very personally. When somebody signs up for Playbook, I take it very personally because I want them to grow their business and I want to do whatever I can to help them grow their business. I know that when Everett is working with me, he is investing in my success as much as I am investing in coaching with him. And I know that Uncle Roy feels the same. And I know that Ann feels the same. And I know that J. Michael feels the same. And I know that AJ feels the same. And I know that Dave Walsh feels the same. I know Scott Parkin feels like that when he works with people. All of these different coaches, the good ones, that's the way that they are. They want to see you succeed. And they'll do what it takes to get you there. Do your research. Ask around. Get references. Learn from Amanda's story. And trust your gut. But don't ever stop coaching. Don't ever stop coaching. Guys, thanks so much for listening to this episode. And again, thank you for subscribing wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean. Every episode is available at vopreneur.com. You can go on there and listen to past episodes. You can share episodes with your social networks using the social sharing buttons. And I would love for you to do that at vopreneur.com. And I also thank you for the reviews that you leave as well when you subscribe and listen. Thanks so much for listening, guys. And I'll catch you on the next one. The Everyday Vopreneur Podcast. Available everywhere fine podcasts are given away for free. Mostly, we think. Your number one marketing tool is your voiceover demos. When you're posting them online, you want to be sure they're playable on any device and with any browser. The Voice Sam Player does exactly that. Sign up at msvo.me slash msvoicesam and receive three months of Voice Sam for the price of one. Sign up now at msvo.me slash msvoicesam. And see. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more VOpreneur goodness? 
Jump online at vopreneur.com.